Hey guys, welcome back to Nat1 Videos. Today I am going to be focusing on part two of my Dungeon in a Box build, my collaboration with Crazy Crafter. And today I am going to be focusing on the lid, which is going to be open terrain. So yeah, I'm not gonna to talk too much at the beginning today. I just wanna say thanks to everybody who watched part one. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen part one, Give that a watch as well. Uh, okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so originally my plan for this lid was to do a broken down old church um, graveyard kind of thing, and I have changed my mind. It is still going to be a cemetery, but it is going to be a dwarven cemetery. The reason being is that I have another friend who's a crafter called Carl, a recent friend, um, who posted a video on his YouTube channel, Carl Makes Stuff This Week, of a carved dwarven face broken down landscape thing. So he uh, got his idea for that from watching one of my videos, and now we're coming full circle of me going, wow, I really like what he did. I want to incorporate something like that in my build. So I'm going to have some broken down dwarven statues within this build and within the cemetery as well. So I have an idea of having a circle in the middle, cobblestones and another raised up circular platform in the middle with some tombs on it. Uh, maybe a tomb here, a larger tomb here as well, and some pillars and stuff like that. That's the plan, we'll see what happens. But I'm gonna use the classic measuring tool, a bowl, to start this build process. I don't want to spend too much time second guessing myself and thinking I've got an idea in my head and I'm just gonna go for it. Thankfully in this build, unlike my video that I posted on Wednesday, there isn't a lot of brick cutting out, so... Hello! So I also want another circle on the inside. And this is going to have four little dwarven tombstones sitting on top. Okay, so I've cut a circle of XPS foam, a little bit rough around the edges, but that's okay because it's going to be ruins. And I've marked the center point. And just so that I can get it in the right place, uh, I've also marked center point here. And I'm using a cocktail uh, toothpick so that this is exactly in the right place. And that's just going to hold it until I'm ready and I, I'm confident that I'm going to glue things. So I spent the last couple of days looking at dwarven architecture in films and fantasy art just to see how I can incorporate this circle into my piece um, and it just seems that in Dwarven architecture it's all about symmetry so even if you have a circle you can bring those angular lines um, they have like hexagons and this kind of thing in uh, and repeated patterns also so with this piece I just kind of made it up as I was going along I just made sure that it was quite angular within the circle itself and it seemed to work out really, really nicely. Carving the steps was probably the best part of it, I think. There we go. I think that's looking quite dwarvenish. Um, yep, and then I'm gonna put some little tombs on top of these as well. Yep, that's gonna be cool. Okay, I've got the middle part done and I'm really quite happy with it. I'm just trying to make sure that it's pretty central and I'm going to carry out carry on these um, this cobblestones idea out to the edges. When it comes to the fantasy genre of books and movies, my favorite characters are very often the dwarf. For instance, Lord of the Rings, Gimli is a total badass and I just love the idea of running around with a big battle axe slaying orcs all day long. What else would you do with your time? So here we go guys, this is how it's looking. I've kind of started beating up the, uh, the stonework on the middle part as well, but uh, you've had enough time lapse of me beating stuff up, so we're gonna move on to the terrain work now. Okay, so I have been doing a bit of carving, as you can see with my XPS foam again. These have all been carved specifically for this project. 
and this is my dwarven pillar design if you're interested in seeing the carving process for one of these you can watch my dwarven carving pillars video which you will see at the top of the screen right now i don't want to waste time on screen for this project and um, if you're interested in seeing how i make these you can go and watch that so uh these two are going to be pillars within the outdoor terrain but because i want to tie it together with the dungeon kind of below or the catacombs i've carved this one for beneath the catacombs as well and at some point i'm going to stick that into the dungeon against the wall i'm going to cut it and make sure it's so it's kind of like a dwarven relief on the wall so that one's for the dungeon these two are are four on top i think this one's going to be standing and the other one's going to be broken. So I'm just going to break up a dwarven pillar. That actually looks super cool. Okay, so the composition of this thing is starting to come together. We've got one remaining standing statue that's going to be there. Broken down, overgrown statue here. Uh, some rock formations here and here and then a tomb here and a tomb there and then that will be pretty much it a bit of flocking and then yeah that's it first things first though I still haven't actually glued my centerpiece so I need to do that let's just glue the rest on as it happens, this dwarven terrain is going to be perfect for Colin because I know in his current D&D game he's playing a dwarf called Nilok the Battle Rager. Let's have a look so that you guys can see the front of how this is looking. It's starting to get there. Ooh. So I'm just going to get some other boulders and stuff and put them here. Okay, so now I need to figure out where I am going to put my tombs and I am going to try and do them evenly spaced on the same side, so it's kind of symmetrical. The stairs begin five centimeters in from the edge here and two centimeters in from here. So I want to cut a hole in the top of this under here, like so so that whenever you lift this catacomb, you can actually see down into the stairs. So they'll be like, if you're playing the game, you, your characters are here and then you're like, I want to look inside the tomb and then you can lift the tomb and basically you'll be able to see down the stairs and then you'll be like, I'm going to go into the tomb and then you lift the lid off. So the tomb is actually going to be slightly larger than that, but it's going to have a plug shape that plugs into that if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna match it up over on this side as well. But I'm gonna cut this out and then you can have a look and see. Okay, so I've cut this out and there you go. You can see the stairs. Now I need to create two little tombs that are exactly the same. Okay, two, I've got two perfect squares that are going to act as the bases for my tombs here. And I want to cut a, a lip in each one. So it's like a step up and then there'll be a door and into the tomb. That's the plan anyway. Building these little tombs was actually one of the easiest parts of the whole entire process. You just cut little squares and stack them on top of each other and once they're glued together you can just turn them on their side and you just use your blade to cut your brickwork in. I mean it couldn't be simpler re really so this is probably a great place for someone to start if they are just starting into crafting and well especially if they like dwarven terrain etc. There we go I've got two tombs. The one on the left I have stuck the plug in so that it can stick into the top of the project so let's see if it fits. This one will go here and this one will go 
here. Right. This is starting to look pretty sweet. So earlier in the video I showed you this uh, dwarven face I'm going to put on the inside. I'm going to put it against this wall um, so that it ties the whole piece together. You go down in and it's still got the dwarven vibes going on. Uh, I just need to cut it down and make it the right shape to go against the wall. Do you know what? I've been cutting myself recently. I am not going to make that mistake today. <laughs> that is epic. So whenever I did my Dwarven um, statue tutorial, Someone mentioned that in a game they would they would imagine that someone has to put their hand into the mouth to get something or something like that. So there is a cool little potential scenario right there. Oh man, I'm so happy with that. There we go. Hard to beat. That is awesome. Time to build four little graves for the top. I've got just these little rectangles and I'm going to whittle them down to make them seem a little more dwarven grave-like. So let's give it a try. I am absolutely loving building this dwarven architecture. Lots of simple little shapes and things that you can create very simply and easily, but they're extremely effective, like these little graves. Easy to cut, easy to do. There's a little dwar uh, dwarven grave. Uh, I may carve a little rune in the top. I haven't decided yet. Um, but yeah, that's going to look cool whenever it sits on top. So I'm just going to do the rest of the three pretty much exactly the same. So I'll skip to when that's done. So I've got my four little graves and now I want to make a standing stone for the middle. Like a, like a many air obelisk kind of thing um, and some of you might have seen my Skyrim Waterstone video and I'm pretty much going to do the exact same thing just make a, a nice standing stone the way I made in that video if you haven't seen that video go and check it out cool thing about crafting is that once you've done something once you can do it again and the second time that you do it you don't second guess yourself because you know exactly the result that you're going to get and that's why I love these stones that ought to do nicely. So let's stick the graves and my stone into the project. Okay, it is pretty much done except for flocking and painting the... <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm really happy with that. Colin, I don't want to send this to you, but I'm going to. Okay, so I'm going to put in the ground textures, the stones and the flocking kind of sort of thing. Not, I'm not going to add any green grass flocking or any bushes or anything like that. I am going to leave that to Colin if he wants to add some greenery. I'm just going to put some texture on the floor and for that I'm using uh, bark, which I put in a blender and it's come out really nice and fine in, well, different textures. So, and for the sake of speed, I'm gonna use my glue gun. Here we go. I've made a lot of mistakes with some of my recent builds and I think that that was a great learning curve because this is the first build that I've done where I haven't made any mistakes in the whole entire process. Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna be flocking like that. So I'm gonna come back when it's all done Okay guys, I'm just giving you a very rare shot of my actual workspace. Wait, wait. Just to show you that, yeah. All the flocking is now glued in place. And this thing is looking sweet. Oh yeah, look at this. 
broken down pillars. Very happy, so yeah, we're about to paint it all black. Actually, I'm going to cut right now to runes. I'm going to carve some runes into the side of the box, and that's the last thing. So the last detail of this box before I paint it black and put it in the post to Colin is I'm going to write some runes, uh, dwarvish runes, which I've figured out. I have four sets of dwarvish runes, uh, one for each panel on the side. This one says collaborate. This one says Solidarity, this one says Crazy Crafter, and this one says Nat One Videos. So, I'm going to start with this one. Yeah, bit of a time lapse for you guys. So with the Dwarven Runes, I originally had planned to write something totally cool, like Beware or something dangerous. But in the end I thought, well, why not just tie it together with Crazy Crafter and that one videos and then it's a cool little memory. Okay, there we go. Nat one videos in runes, nat one videos. Um, I am going to do the same for collaboration, solidarity and Crazy Crafter on the different sides of the boxes. But I'm not going to do a time lapse for all of those because it would just end up going on and on and on and on. And let's wrap this thing up. All my dwarven runes are done. And I've also textured everything to look like stone. So yeah, nat one videos, solidarity, crazy crafter, and collaboration in runes. So that is the project done in terms of the build. Uh, I did say to Colin that I was going to paint it in black, black Mod Podge before I send it to him, but I've done so many Black Mod Podge paintings that I'm going to spare you that and I'm going to click to when it's finished. There we go guys, it's all done complete, dried and everything and I am extremely happy with it, I'm so proud of this. Uh, it has turned out better than what I imagined in my head before I started. I'm so glad that Carl kicked off my idea to do a Dwarven uh, cemetery instead of just your classic cemetery because this is way better than what I would have come up with uh, had he not inspired that idea. So thanks for that Carl. There is the broken down Dwarven pillar. Uh, my standing stone that's inspired by my Skyrim video, my Dwarven Pillar that's inspired by my Dwarven Pillars video, it's just tying it all together and I love the little graves as well and I love the fact that you can open this up and see down into the stairs, I love the fact that you can take the lid off and there's a dungeon inside I love the fact that it's tied together with this dwarven face. And to top it all off, the runes turned out epic. So yeah. That is the end of this build. Obviously, I'm now going to go and do a little stylish kind of hydro shot for you guys. If you liked that video, please subscribe. Check out my other videos, you might enjoy them too. And I will see you guys next Wednesday when I've got a completely different kind of build, but I still think it's really, really cool. So, see you again next week, guys. Bye.